I greet you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. How many know those are the three most important anywhere on planet Earth? Also in heaven. And he has dominion and jurisdiction over the heaven, the earth, and under the earth. However, the devil and unruly men have made a mess of things. How many have noticed that? How many know it's our job to put things back together the right way again? Just give the Lord a wave right now. Say, Lord, use me, use me, use me. You may be seated in the presence of the Almighty God. Do you love Archbishop? Can we give the Lord a hand of praise for him? What a great, great, great man of God. And I am truly honored to be here this morning. Look at all you people. You're everywhere. <laughs> if we had more people, where would you go? You sit outside the windows there and put some chairs and go, hey, I want to listen. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's just pray in the Holy Ghost for a minute. Just begin to pray for a moment. The Lord's about to do something amazing. I feel the anointing. I feel the anointing for it. His favor is coming upon his elect. And the Lord is going to have me deliver a very powerful, powerful word from his heart to his church and his people and to the nation here today. Come on, let's just pray for a minute. Let me hear you. Raise your voice. Many churches, they don't speak in tongues anymore, you know? They got away from it. But there's power in praying in the Spirit. There's power in fasting. Your bishop has written a, a book about it, Power in Fasting. I was just looking at that. Power of the Holy Ghost. Without it, without Him moving, there's nothing to do. And the first order of things was dominion and it says he, he's made us in his own image after his own likeness just lift your hands the presence of the Lord is falling there's someone with a severe kidney problem I'm just hearing this right now I didn't plan to say this someone's kidneys are being healed right now you have a severe problem a real problem but you're leaving healed today. If you need any healing anywhere in your body, someone in the eyesight, your vision has gone very um, blurred and you're having a real problem. The Lord's healing you right now. Father, let it happen. Let, the, let, let healing fall upon this place. Right now, just for a moment. Yeah, thank you, Lord. All right, grab your Bibles in your hand. Grab your Bible in your hands. The presence of God is here. I, I saw it in a vision just coming in here. It's my first time here, by the way. <laughs> and I'm loving what I'm seeing. It's phenomenal. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, we turn the service into thy hands. Speak through my lips. Think through my mind and speak through my lips what you want to say to your people. And let the impact be made. And you will leave here, not the way you came, in Jesus' name. You'll become a kingdom builder, a kingdom advancer. Things are going to change. You're going to see the hand of God. Wow. Father, touch people in their homes watching through the television. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost fall upon them right now. Anoint this land again. Anoint this nation of Kenya more so than it's been. Break the spirit of poverty and religiosity and pride and corruption. 
and let the Holy Ghost fall upon people. Let us be glory carriers. Let us be people that are going to take dominion in this land. Let the church rise up in Jesus' name to take over. Other people are trying to take over, but that's not God's plan. The church needs to rise up in power. Grab your Bibles. Grab your Bibles in your hand. I have mine here. I want you to open to the book of Revelation, chapter 5. The Lord is still moving. People are being healed right now. If you need healing anywhere, just put your hand on yourself as a point of contact. The presence of God is touching people. Randere Soldai. Randere Soldai. Kashi Labai. Susukodere. Faram Randere Sote. Revelation chapter 5, verse 12. Wow, for I hear the Lord saying, these are the days now that many have longed for. And I'm going to begin to pour out new fire upon this land, says the Spirit of the Lord. And you're going to be seeking to see my favor. This is the day when I'm going to favor my elect in Zion. Not everybody who's compromising, but the people that have lived and walked with me. They're going to begin to see my favor, says the Lord. And you're going to begin to see my hand in new ways. And the Lord's going to infiltrate the government. And many in government will be saved. Many in government are going to be filled with the Holy Ghost. God's going to turn the tide and begin to break corruption out from the deep rootedness of, uh, in the systems that it's been in. And God's going to raise up people that are going to become so powerful they'll never fear man again. Lift your hands. They'll never fear what men think or say about them. They die to that. And they begin to say, I'm on a mission. The Lord's going to make a clear, a clear path for you, says, for you, my precious chosen ones. And the blueprint from heaven is going to become real from today. I declare it over you by the Holy Ghost. And even after this meeting, the rest of the day into this week and the days to come, it's going to become very clear to you exactly what it is God wants you to do exactly specifically the exact perfect will of God for you and the plan that he has for you the specific ministry the specific business the specific assignment the specific mission the Lord says I'm gonna make it clear you're gonna begin to see and your eyes will see that which you've not seen before the Lord is removing oppressions off of you that have clouded your vision. The Lord is removing things that have oppressed you, demons that have oppressed you, environments that have oppressed you and limited you and subjected you to foolishness. God is breaking you out from those things in this day and hour. And you're going to begin to see my favor. My hand, says the Lord. My mighty hand. The scripture says he has this in the palm of his hand, but then I see the Lord putting his hand on the top of you, holding you in between his hands, and you're going to receive fire. Lift your hands right now. The fire of God is falling. Receive it. Receive it. Randele shokotaya taka seta lo shokote. Yeah, Lord, and I see harvest coming to people that have sown much seed but haven't seemed to reap yet. The Lord says, I'm breaking something that's been in the way. And you're going to begin to walk in my blessings. The Lord spoke to me uh, some weeks ago and said a new movement is coming into the city of Nairobi and throughout the nation of Kenya. Lift your hands. A new movement from heaven has been released. I can take it to the day in the place where I was in the city center, by the nation center. At the time, it looked bleak, it looked dead, it looked quiet. It looked... And all of a sudden, we're seeing now revival. You saw the events that have happened. Things are picking up. And the second thing the Lord said, he said, those that oppose this movement of mine, who oppose the anointing and the anointed, 
will fall down and not get up again. Two days ago, the Lord spoke to me to say this here. This is going to be the greatest day of my blessing for my elect. This is going to be the greatest day of provision and wealth creation for my own servants, my own sons and daughters. But it's also going to be the day of judgment for the wicked. God says, I'm separating the wheat from the tares, the pure from the profane. The polluted from the good. The Lord's going to bless houses and bless companies and bless churches and bless ministries and bless even government arenas and government offices. I see the favor of God. Lift your hands and receive the touch right now. Rasha, Nere, Sokote Shakaiti, Malamango, the Cassitoya, Karanaba Sataha. The completion of industries being developed. God says the economy is coming back. Listen to God's sermon here. The Lord says the economy is coming back. There was a move in 2007 when we came here that broke loose the economy and dead industries were revived. People told me the dairy industry, the meat industry, the tourism tourism industry. And then all these roads were built. Look at the Thika Superhighway. I prophesied that. There was nothing there. Look at the new expressway. God had me prophesy that. Look at the how Westlands was revamped. Look at what's happening in Gong and Chuka, Nakuru becoming a city. All of these developments of elevation, Machacos, the road development all across the country, there was nothing like that. Even the SGR train, you know, the Lord spoke to me to prophesy that. When the whole railway system was only a few, you know, rusted tracks and a few rail cars. Now look. I have a friend, I believe he's here, a businessman. And the Lord spoke. You're here somewhere, I don't know where you are. The Lord spoke about a piece of land and he bought it. And he just told me this week that the SGR terminal has been built a mile, one kilometer from his property. The development is, is amazing. And the Lord said it's gonna go higher. How many believe that the economy is coming back? Don't you ever be one to say, you know, the economy's bad, there's no money in the country. Don't talk like that. How many know God has all the treasures? How many know Haggai 2 says the silver and the gold is his? How many know that Proverbs 10, 22 says the blessing of the Lord makes rich and has no sorrow? How many know that Proverbs 13, 22 says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just? How many know Deuteronomy 8, 18 says, I am the Lord thy God who gives you power to create wealth to receive it, to make money, to manage it, to multiply it, to move it. It's the covenant of God. The same Hebrew word of anointing is also in Acts 1.8. You shall be anointed. Power, the word power. To be my witnesses all over the world. God hasn't forgotten his promises, but people have. Lift your hands and say, Lord, I'm going to remember. Deuteronomy 8 says, remember that when you're blessed, it wasn't you that did it. And I prophesy here to this great servant of God and his lovely wife and all his pastors and all his people and all of you in the congregation, congregations, that you're about to be blessed in ways you've not seen before. Raste, Rusha, Rasha. Yeah, you that are coming to the altar, I see, I didn't, <laughs> let it happen. God's going to bless, the fire is here. The fire is here, tap the grace. Part of the mantle upon my ministry is economic. Part of it is political. Part of it is like a leadership route to, to give direction to the leaders and to the church. But God says great expansion is coming, you're going to see what you've not seen before. 
Lift your hands and tap into this realm right now. I see several people becoming very blessed in business, very blessed in ministry, very blessed. The fire is falling here. The fire of God is falling here. The fire of God is falling here. Radana Shai Kusa. Come on, pray in the spirit. Lift your hands and receive right now. Jesus, we give you praise. Jesus, we give you praise. And I also want to stand in the gap and pray. Pray on behalf of the people that have grieved you, Holy Spirit. Let them never do it again. Let them never do it again. Let them not grieve you. The Lord's been grieved with many situations. Don't grieve him. Don't grieve him. Let him move. And you're supposed to be his habitation. You're his place of power. Without you, what does he have to do with you, through you? He can't. Don't grieve him. Receive him. Repent of all sin. Get it out of your life. First John 1 and 9 says, Father, I confess to you uh, any sin. Please cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Forgive me of all sin. Cleanse me from all, all unrighteousness. You need to pray like that all the time. Keep yourself clean. I'm always praying that prayer. It's a scriptural promise. But every day, all the time, keeping myself in the realm of the glory of God. Walking with God is not a joke. It's not maybe so that one day, the next day. No, it's a, it's a, you've got to commit yourself to it. And, uh, 1 John 5, 14 and 15 says, if we ask things according to his will, he hears and he'll grant us those petitions that we ask him of. Mark eleven twenty four 24 says, whatever things you, you desire when you're praying, believe you receive them and you'll have them. Mark eleven twenty five 25 says, forgive all that have hurt you. Let's do that today too. Release it. Many people have had very horrible situations. I know attacks and horrible things. You have to forgive. You have to forgive. Forgiveness does not cleanse the uh, uh, offender of their guilt or their crime. It, it releases you from them and from that situation. So forgiveness is a gift you give to yourself. You free yourself. Every encumbrance, Lord, I speak right now. You people on this side are a little bit quiet. Somebody get excited over here. You look like you're just sitting there. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at you. Lift your hands. Receive the touch. I don't know. It, it should be everywhere the same. Look at this one. Right here is fire. Are you catching it over there? Lift your hands. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Empower your people to be drawn. You know, the scripture says, unless the father draws one to himself, they can't come. The father's always reaching his hand out. Are we taking his hand? I see people, Bishop, I see people putting their hand in the hand of God from today, from this service, and walking in fire from here. And the Lord says, now it's hard in the environments you've been in, it seems. Riding on matatus and all that, the Lord will give you a vehicle. Somebody say amen. The Lord will give you your own car. Can you receive that? And you can ride with worship music on. And have a beautiful house. How many need a beautiful house? I mean, a beautiful place. You need to move your residence. You need to have a great vehicle or more, more than one, many. So you can have the atmosphere of heaven always being with you. God didn't call you to live down here. To walk like uh, with the chickens. He wants you to fly like an eagle. He wants you to fly like an eagle. Come on, say amen. Lift your hands and put your hands out as a prophetic sign. And say, I'm going to fly, I'm going to fly, I'm going to fly. Can I take it so far? You need, a, you need a helicopter, you need a jet. What do you need? You need a van, you need a, a land cruiser. What do you need? What do you need? What do you need? You need new furniture in your house. You need money in your accounts. What do you need? God is the provider of all of that. Provision for the vision. Jehovah Jireh, we find his name in the book of Genesis. J 
J-I-R-E-H. In the Hebrew, they call it Yireh or Jireh. One of the Hebrew definitions is very powerful. It's not like we say it in English. It's more deep. In the Hebrew definition, Jireh, uh, a Hebrew definition says, He's the Father, our overseer, who sees our future and will see to it that it happens. How many know that's more than money and just little things? You don't need Jehovah Jireh just to take care of your little sustenance, you know, your daily living. You need him to fund the vision. Lift your hands. The vision is becoming clear. Man of God, I hear the Lord say so clearly, the vision is going to be clear to people. That oppression is breaking off of you right now. That cloud that's been over your head and over your neighborhood, over people in the families and the environments is being broken in Jesus' name. Why? I'll tell you how it happens. Not just because of a decree, although God does use that, but because of the power of the Holy Spirit coming. We are vessels. We are messengers. We are not the boss. We are not uh, the message. We are messengers. We're carriers. I preached a message on that some time ago. I have to re release that video. Called Glory Carriers. We are glory carriers. Someone say, I'm a glory carrier. You carry the glory, you're going to see you're going to see three things. You're going to see the devil manifest in some of your people. And you're going to begin to see, too, who's who and what's what. The agendas of men, you'll begin to see. And you say, oh, I see. You were right there, but I didn't know you were like that. So maybe I need to step out of this a little bit. Isaiah 51, verse 1. Abraham was mentioned by the great prophet Isaiah, who to me is a phenomenal prophet. 66 books, I mean 66 chapters. He predicted the Messiah. He, he said so many powerful things. But in Isaiah 51, 1, he said, I called Abram apart alone. The Lord said, out of the rock that he was taken out of. And, and then I, I, I worked with him and I blessed him and then I increased him. There was a process. Abraham didn't just walk into multi-billionaire status just like that. It was a process. Someone say it's a process. Lift your hands and say, Lord, let me submit to the process. That's why he said, make disciples. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature and make disciples of all nations. A disciple is a committed follower. It's a protege to a mentor. It's a son or daughter to a leader. And that whole system has been broken so bad in the church. I prophesy here today in the great city of Nairobi that God is putting it all back together again. I saw a vision last week of the potter's wheel. You know the scripture talks about the, the potter was marred in the hand of the potter and he had to break it and make it again. The Lord says he's, however that works, the Lord says he's making people again. He's making you. You were called, but you got out of the calling. You were in the glory at one time. You knew the Lord. You knew the Holy Spirit to a degree. But then you got away from it. Lift your hands. This is revival. Life again. Life again. Revive means to give life again. You had a touch before. You got saved. You would say now you genuinely love Jesus. But the Holy Spirit is not very resident in your life. God says from today. Lift your hands. Some of you are going to go out of here shining like Moses from the mountaintop. People are going to look at you and say, you look different. Your countenance. Not from the touch of a man, but from the touch of the Holy Ghost. How many feel the presence of God here? This is phenomenal. Phenomenal. And God says, I'm going to do this all across the land. I'm going to do it all across East Africa. Man of God, I'm going to do it all across East Africa. The Lord says, all across East Africa. East Africa shall be a beaming, shining light to the world. Watch, 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 in the coming days, watch, East Africa, the Lord says, I'm resident here. Myself, why didn't I go to Nigeria? I have big invitations there, big people there. Why aren't I there? Why am I in Nairobi, Kenya? Uh, why, 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 why? The Lord said, this is headquarters. <laughs> Come on. 
Can you believe that? Can, I'm, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting touched by myself. Can you believe that? This is headquarters. Karande, Shondolo. And the devil thought he had it. And the devil thought he won. And the devil thought he had the government. And the devil thought he had people. And the devil thought he had the business world. And, and, and the church world and knocked everything around. But I tell you, the revival is coming from heaven. Someone lift your hands and receive it. The touch of glory to put it all back together again. Like the potter took the, the clay and the vessel and put it back together again. And the Lord is going to uh, stop up every hole. You know the prophet, it was the prophet Hosea in the first chapter, I think he said you, 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 have, you have a bag with holes in it. Your pockets have holes in it. And he said, consider your ways. Consider your ways. If you think you're going to get blessed and be a firebrand without holiness unto the Lord, you're kidding yourself. Because it can't happen. <laughs> he said, you, you have this and you have that, but it's leaking out. Consider your ways. I see the Lord calling people out to fasting and prayer. Serious consecration. Get ready. Get ready. And East Africa shall be a place of glory. The Lord says, my servant, I'm raising up new branches. I'm raising up new apostles under you, the apostle, who will be in regions, managing places. And the Lord says, the glory that you carry, even myself, I feel this connection. I tell you, this is amazing how we're here. And, and you just invited me. I was so touched. You said, come Sunday. I thought, whoa. Hey. But there's going to be centers of revival all across the land. And let me just br branch it out. All across East Africa. Yes, other parts of Africa. Yes, Europe. Yes, America. Yes, Asia. Of course. But there's a phenomenon happening in, e happening in East Africa. Lift your hands. And the Lord says, I'm going to raise up businessmen and businesswomen to be blessed for the purpose of funding the anti-harvest, for the purpose of funding. Some people will have that ministry. They're saying, you know, I'm not called to preach, but I'm called to do business. So what can I do to help this thing move? Ah, let me prophesy. Oh, my. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Lord. I hear you so clearly. The Lord says, even before the year's over, there's going to be a sign of major financial breakthrough for so many, even for this house, even for this church, even for this matter, even for these, these here. For myself, for all of us. Hey. But next year, 2023, is going to be the greatest year ever. It's going to be the greatest year of breakthrough, breakout, advancement, expansion, elevation, new work, new money, new wealth, new things that you've ever seen in your life. How many want to tap the grace of that right now? Expansion and elevation to the elect. <clears throat> the Lord spoke to me some years ago about a, a group within the group. He called it an elite group within the church in the elect an elite group in the in the elect that is really going to bless lift your hands how many would like to be one of them you elect yourself first remember remember what i said in mark 11 24 whatever things you desire when you pray believe you receive them and you'll have them in isaiah 45 2 and 3 the lord said i'll give you hidden hidden riches hidden of hidden places, treasures. And he said, by this you'll know that I'm the Lord your God who even calls you by your own name. But I prophesy the dead, the dead season is over. The day of dryness is over. Come on, in Nairobi, the day of deadness is over. It's over, it's over, it's ending. Today, 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 right now, right here. Woo! Glory! Isaiah 43, 18, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Verse 19, but behold, I'm going to do a new thing, says the Lord. Shall I not now spring forth? I'll make rivers even to run in the dry places. The rivers of water of the Holy Ghost. 
John 7, 38, rivers of living water shall flow out of your, be out of your belly. And Jesus said in John 6, 6, 6, 63, these words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Third John 2, a paramount verse in the Bible which sums up the gospel in a lot of ways. Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. King James said, uh, uh, wish. Uh, uh, NKJV says, uh, I pray, John said. And New International Version says, I desire above everything else that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. Now watch what he said next. He said, I hear, I, I, I'm, great, I'm grateful to hear that you're walking in truth. For I have no greater joy, verse 4, that my children walk in truth. John 8, 32 said, the truth will make you free. You shall know it. And the truth will make you free. A lot of preachers misquote that. They say uh, the truth will set you free. No. The scripture says, he who the sun sets free is free indeed. But if you're set free, you can entangle yourself again by an illicit lifestyle. But if you're made free, you become something that cannot be now unmade. That's why, that's why the, the Lord gave a strong warning through uh, the writer of Hebrews. Who, 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 who. Read it in the sixth chapter and the twelfth chapter. It said, if you've tasted of the power of the world to come, how then can there be a place of repentance for you if you turn back? It's like you're crucifying the Son of God afresh, and you can't do that. That's why this is a holy thing. This is a holy endeavor. Your life depends on it and the life of others depend on it. Let me tell you something, the people that attack the move of God, they blasphemed God because they stole the move of God from people. Wherever it was crushed, even in the city of Nairobi, the, the offenders have to pay for that. But the Lord's going to bless his people as he even judges the wicked. The Lord visited me and said, son, those that have done such evil, I have not forgotten. He said, I have not forgotten. He said, in fact, I'm going to trace every one of them up and not one of them will escape my wrath. And that was the word of the Lord. I wasn't thinking about it. I wasn't praying about it. I had forgotten so many things. I was in America. In my beautiful house, and the Lord walked into my house and stood in front of me and spoke that to me. I said, wow. Three years ago, in August 2019, I was in my house in America, and the Lord said, told me who the, who the fifth president would be. And it happened. Lift your hands. <laughs> he, is now, he is now the fifth president. I just was asking the Lord one day, who is going to be the next president? He answered me in a, in a second and said the name. If I can relect all the things that God spoke about, it's, it's, it's amazing. But development is coming here. Not for, the, not for the wicked, but for the righteous. I have a... All right, I got to pause. Gotta, let me take a breath. You got to clap on that one. Go ahead. I don't want to rush. I have so much I want to cover. Yeah, not for the others, but for the righteous. How many are righteous? How many know you're righteous? How many are going to walk in righteousness more from today? Because you're going to connect more with the Holy Ghost and walk with Him and talk to Him and have conversation with Him and worship Jesus and talk to the Father and commune with the Holy Spirit. He's a person. He's the third person of the Trinity. He's a person. And he's right here. You can feel him all over this, all over this house right now moving. Lift your hands again and wave your hands to the Lord. Just say, Lord, I'm yours. Can they make the connection? I'm deeply burdened and troubled about the state of the church economically. Most people. Ezra 710, yeah, Lord. Ezra 710 said now, Ezra became a teaching priest, a, a teaching uh, man of God, or prophet, which was rare in those days. And it says he gave himself to study the word, and then he applied it to his own life, and then he taught it to others. Do you see the pattern? It's no point to stand up and tell anybody what you didn't do. 
We have too many people wannabes in the church, you know? Making noise, trying to preach, trying to have a church, but they have no testimony. They have no testimony. Let us see God in you. I was amazed when your bishop was speaking the other day and talking about old days. And how he came through that. And then now, now look, lift your hands. Let's celebrate what the Lord is doing. And Papa, the, the Lord said, this is just the beginning. God says, even as I stand here, and I, I, I feel very humbled, you know, I feel very uh, reticent to say it, but the Lord wants me to say it. Because I sent my prophet, says the Lord, to stand here, the day of elevation and new fire is coming of expansion for this work all over the land and even all over East Africa. And I will raise managing directors of companies. I will raise managing directors of churches and organizations and networks that will be housed in the move of God. We need to go to them and light the torch, light the fire in those places. We need to go. And, and, and the fire will remain and there'll be resident houses of glory all across the land. Not just in Kenya, but across East Africa. And the Lord said, the grace that I put upon you, says the Lord, is lifting to another level in this season. And expansion is coming across because of your pure heart. <laughs> oh, let's give the Lord some praise on that. Come on now. Do you know how many invitations I get? You could imagine. Do you know how many I take? But I had to come here. I said I had to come here. I said God arranged it. God arranged it. God arranged it. And I said, Dila Shugaya. Ah la la la. The clock is ticking. Tick tock, tick tock, said the clock. So we gotta move. Alright, get your Bibles. Let's go to Revelation chapter five. Alright, dear, you're okay. Give her a Bible. She needs to sit up and read the Bible. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 12. Are you there? When you're there, say hallelujah. Before that, in the 11th verse, the scripture talks about the multitude of angels that cried with a loud voice and was talking about Jesus himself and said, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, watch this, to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. The title of this message that the Lord gave me is God's Doctrine of Power, the Main Event. Lift your hands. God's doctrine of power. I can't finish it, but I'm going to just a few minutes. The main event. I have to ask everyone a question. Did Jesus need all that as God in heaven? When he rose again, did he need power? He is power. Does he need riches? He has it all. Does he need wisdom? He's the, he's the only wise God. <laughs> Did he need strength? He's strong. He's a spirit. He's in the spirit. Does he need blessing and glory and honor? For what? People are worshiping him by the millions. Lift your hands. You I want you to understand this. This was a thing that was prophetic that John saw that Jesus was receiving back so he could then give it to the church. You, you didn't get that. He took it when he rose from the dead and conquered death, hell, and the grave. He took it all back to give it to us. Lift your hands and I receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and blessed glory and honor. Power and riches, wisdom and strength and blessed glory and honor. Power, say it, say it. These are, power. These are, these are kingdom keywords. These are power words. Speak it over yourself. I receive power and riches, wealth and wisdom and strength 
Isaiah 11, 2 is a reference to that that says, this he calls it the spirit of might. Attributes of the Holy Ghost are wisdom and knowledge and understanding and, and, and might and counsel and the fear of the Lord. Make a note of that, Isaiah 11, 2, it goes together with Revelation 5, 12, 11 and 12. Say it again. Power. Wisdom. I mean, no, excuse me. Riches. So guess what? God wants to give you power. Say, I'm receiving it right now. From the Holy Spirit himself. And then he gives me riches. You notice he didn't put wisdom before that. So you receive power and then you receive riches. And then you need wisdom to know what to do with power and riches. Because a fool with money... A fool and his money soon part ways. Have you ever heard that? Somebody that doesn't know how to manage power, they go off. They become a lord unto themselves. They think they're important until God cuts them down. Remember Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was the big arrogant king and then the day came he was like a goat or a sheep eating grass. Power and riches. Say, I receive it. And wisdom to know what to do with everything. And strength for my physical being. 3 John 2 matches that. Write that down for 3 John 2. Beloved, I wish above all things to you prosper, being healthy, even as your soul prospers. He wants you to be in good health. Even as your soul prospers. I like the word even as in King James. It means it's a measuring, it's a measuring, uh, it's a measuring word. It's a bridge from one to the other. At the level that your soul is prospering, you can prosper financially and you can prosper in your health. You can prosper in life. Yeah, Lord. Psalm 35, 27 says, I take pleasure in the prosperity of my servant. Are you his servant? He said, for what? Let the name of the Lord be magnified. Amplification. Provision comes for you to expand the kingdom. But God also does want you to be blessed yourself. How many need some blessings for yourself? Be honest. How many want some blessings to expand the kingdom? Lift your hands. And too many people are walking around without direction. Why? Because, they, because they're a sheep like scattered about with no shepherd. The need for leadership here, there's a big gap. And I'm glad to stick my big size 14 feet into this thing. And say, okay. Leadership is responsibility. Leadership demands holiness. Leadership demands study. Leadership demands that you have power from the Holy Spirit and you give it to other people. The anointing is to give it out. What you have is to give to a part to people that they can be raised up to. It's not for one man to shine, it's for several. I see several leaders rising up here. You're a leader somewhere in your life. You may not be a preacher, you may not be the best entrepreneur yet, or maybe that's not your calling, but you're leading some something. Be a leader. If you're a father, be a leader. Your mother, be a leader. You're a man, be a, a leader. And I want to take you a step further. Revelation 1.6 says, We're kings and priests unto the Most High. We're royalty. Some would say power and riches. I receive and wisdom. Oh my God. Say, I receive. I need it. James 1 said, if you lack wisdom, ask of God. He'll pour it out liberally upon you. Proverbs said in Proverbs 4, hear now, my son, the instruction of a father, for I give you good doctrine. Forsake not my law. Apply it. And he said, get wisdom and with it, get understanding. And in verse 7, he said, now for wisdom is the principal thing. With it, for with it, get understanding. The Bible calls understanding also as a move of the Holy Spirit. Understanding is a great thing to have. Oh, baby, bless you. She came to the altar, little mama. Hey, I love your red dress, sweetheart. Wow. Bless the baby, Lord. We can't even end the service like this. It's going to continue. How many know that? Lift your hands. Let me out of time and jump off here in a minute. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Are you blessed? Are you hearing God? 
Do you believe you're a recipient of what I'm saying here? Are you receiving it into yourself? Catch it in your mind, but through the ear gate, but let it go into your spirit. That you are royalty. Say, I'm royalty. I'm a royal ambassador of Father God on the earth. Woo, a lot of people wouldn't think so. They think you're nobody. They try to treat you like you're nobody. Even me. You know how you say in Nairobi? Even me, imagine. If people try to treat you like, God, like, like, you're, like you're nobody. But I don't, I don't tolerate that. I know who I am. We are a chosen generation. <laughs> Call for to his excellence. Ow! I'm walking in power. I'm walking in wisdom. See, that's good. That's a good song because it comes from that scripture. I know who I am. Come on, sing it with me. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in wisdom. Walking in excellence because I know who I am. Huh, huh, huh. Stand on your feet, everybody, and let's give the Lord a hand of praise and receive the crown of the service, the impartation. I can see angels coming here. It's like they're putting crowns on your head. Lift your hands and receive it. I see it in a vision. It crowns, crowns, crowns. We crown him with many crowns. How do we do it if we don't have any crowns? How can you crown Jesus with many crowns if you don't have any crowns? Why? Because God expected us to catch the revelation that we are already kings and queens and princes and princesses unto the most high. How many know that a king cannot rule without a palace? You need a good place. How many know a queen cannot rule without having wealth to manage and treasuries to manage? And how many know all the babies are little princes and princesses? The whole world marvels at the royal family in England. And I'm like, okay. But it's not just them. It's the people here in Nairobi. Lift your hands. You're right here. You think, oh, the queen of England, the Prince Philip, and <sighs> Harry and William. No? If Jesus summoned you to himself and he didn't summon them to himself like he did you, you have a higher position than even them. Catch this revelation. Lift your hands and say, I am a king if you're a man. I can't say it because I'm a man. I can't say queen. So say if you're a lady, say you are a queen. But say I am, but I can't say it. All the little babies say, I'm a prince, if you're a man. Little babies say, I'm a princess, if you're a girl. You are a princess. Wow. Power and riches and wisdom and strength and blessing, glory and honor. For what? As I close, for what? For the purpose of taking dominion. Uh, Genesis 1 26 I, I made you after my own likeness after my own image to give you dominion that you would have it everywhere lift your hands say from today I repent Lord from thinking small I repent from stepping out of my royalty I repent for accepting the thought process of any other man I, I, I repent Lord take it off of me take it off of me take it off of me come on tell the Lord take it off of me take all that nonsense off of me here today, right now in this meeting, right now in this moment, people are trying to make you small and limit you and abuse you and oppress you. It's not the will of God. You need to break out of it. One key, you need to go where you're celebrated, not where you're tolerated. And you need to give like a crazy person. Everything you can give. So, 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 so. Give, give, pray, walk in power, work it, exercise it. And rebuke the devil in Jesus' name. Father, we rebuke the oppression that's been over your people. Let it be broken now in Jesus' name. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Jesus, you are Lord. I said Jesus is Lord. Yesu ni bwana. Come on. Mungu ni mwema. Bwana is a few way. Hallelujah. All right, do you love me?
I sure love you. And you, you can't do anything about it. I just love you. I just do. You know, it's just like that. Do you love me? All right, everybody, blow me a kiss right now. Come on, we need some love up here. Ah. Thank you. Now I give that to the I, I receive it and I give it to the boss. Now let's give Jesus the biggest kiss. Let's give him the biggest shout of praise. Let's give him the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the bishop and overseer of our souls, the great shepherd, the great I am, the everlasting father, the Alpha and the Omega, the Amen, the faithful and the true, the living God, the fairest of 10,000, the pain of the morning star, the lily of the valley. Oh, my God.